everybody. So today we are going to be talking about Rube Goldberg and these incredibly fantastic machines that he's invented, but he didn't quite invent them. So to go into more detail about that, I have this book that I'm going to read to you guys that I think will summarize it up. And then Miss Elia is going to jump in and break down the science behind Rube Goldberg machines. And we're both going to give you a little taste of a Rube Goldberg machine that we invented in our homes. Just like Rube Goldberg. So these are some of his ways. Simple way to crank your car. Only successful way of hailing a streetcar. The only sanitary way to lick a postage stamp. Just like Rube Goldberg, the incredible true story of the man behind the machines. Written by Sarah Aronson. Illustrated by Robert Newbecker. Question. How do you become a successful, award-winning artist and famous inventor without ever inventing anything at all? This is not a trick question. A man named Rube Goldberg did it. In a funny way, his life was just like one of his famous inventions, an improbable and inefficient chain reaction that ends up making perfect sense. From the time he was a boy, Rube Goldberg loved to draw. We're not just talking about simple stuff here. As early as four years old, Rube traced the cartoons he found in his books. At 11, he took official art classes from a sign painter. Rube might have been a quiet boy. He might have been shy, but he was determined to be a great cartoonist for a big-time newspaper. Unfortunately, when he told his family, they were absolutely horrified. Beyond dismayed, Rube's father, Max, had immigrated from Germany to America to give his family a chance for a better life. He didn't want his son to end up a beggar on the streets. So to please his father, Rube went to the University of California, Berkeley, studied engineering, and after graduation got a job with the City of San Francisco Department of Water and Sewers. It was a good job. It paid well. That could have been the end of the story, right? Wrong. Rube detested shoveling tunnels and mines 2,000 feet underground. He didn't enjoy mapping sewer pipes either, and he wasn't very impressed with the city's government. Rube still wanted to draw comics for a big-time newspaper. So after six months, he quit engineering and started over. He got a job at the San Francisco Chronicle. For $8 a week, Rube emptied wastebaskets, cleaned the floors, and filed photographs in the document morgue. And whenever he had a chance, Rube drew and drew and drew. Day after day, Rube submitted his cartoons to the editor. Night after night, the editor mostly said no. When he said yes, Rube some sometimes got paid, but other times he just got out of the office tasks he didn't like to do. After a year, Rube convinced the sports department of the San Francisco Bulletin to hire him. And after that, he was a little more successful. He developed a style. The paper ran his cartoons a column, too. They might have been the next end of story. But then the ground shook. Literally. The 1906 earthquake in San Francisco crumbled the city and left many people without jobs and homes. In the wake of the disaster, it can be hard for people to focus on their dreams. It can be even harder to feel hopeful. But Rube didn't give up on his dream. Instead, he did the only thing he could do. He drew comics to cheer people up. And then he made a big decision. In 1906, there was only one place where a guy like Rube could really make it big. It was the place he called the front row. The cartoon capital of the country, New York City. So he got on a train and headed east. He didn't have much, $200 and a diamond ring. The ring was a gift from his father, just in case Rube needed to sell it to buy a ticket back home. After 12 days of pounding the pavement, lugging his art from newspaper to newspaper, Rube did it! He got a job as a cartoonist at a big-time paper, the New York Evening Mail. He had made it! Right off the bat, Rube became a celebrity. Readers couldn't wait to see what he had to say about all kinds of things. Like sports and politics and the silliness of everyday life. 
but maybe more than anything else, everyone loved reading about Rube's alter ego, Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts. The eccentric professor invented one intricate machine after another, and none of them were straightforward. In fact, they were the opposite of straightforward and often disregarded the laws of physics. Although this was the age when new machines were being invented to make life easier, Rube's screwball contraptions purposefully solved problems in the most surreal and ridiculous ways. Things like, how do you put holes in donuts? A, the goat eats the carrot, the ghost wiggles, then the bird screams and drops an egg on the guy's head, then he shoots an arrow, and then a cannon shoots the hole out of the donut, and that is how you put holes in donuts. How do you turn off a light? Well, that's simple. You fish with a banana, the monkey jumps up and down and starts the fan, the fan goes to the bike, the bike goes to the jack-in-the-box, jack-in-the-box has a bowling ball and a pail, and bam, somebody's jumping up and they get the light. Or even, how do you cut your own hair? Well, simple. Cat chases the mouse. The mouse makes the rocking chair go. The rocking chair does that. And then it looks like there's a boot. It hits somebody. And then there's a goat. And then the goat eats your hair. Easy peasy. Just like the machines he studied in engineering school, these complicated contraptions required lots and lots of parts. And they always worked. On paper, of course. They weren't practical in the real world, but that was never the point. Rube Goldberg didn't draw machines that solved real world problems. He drew comics to make us look closer and question logic and tickle the imagination. And because of that, these machines accomplished something astounding and more important than any pile of nuts and bolts ever could. They challenged people to use the most amazing machine in the universe, the brain. So let's take it from the top. Rube Goldberg became a stubborn, smart, serious about being funny engineer, office boy, cartoonist, commentator, comic genius, and award-winning artist and inventor whose name is now an adjective in the actual dictionary without inventing a thing. Is this kind of thing still possible? You bet it is. Figure out what you want, work as hard as you can, and most of all, have a great time getting there. Just like Rube Goldberg. Before you make a Rube Goldberg contraption at home, there are some things that you need to know. Rube Goldberg used simple machines to perform actions in his drawings. Once you know about simple machines, it's really easy to find them at your house or even make them. First simple machine is a wheel and axle. If you have a toy car at home or toy trucks, you have a wheel and axle already. Wheel and axles make work easier by moving objects across distances. An inclined plane is pretty much a ramp. You can create a ramp out of pretty much anything. You just need to slant it on an incline. A lever. Have you been on a seesaw at the park? That is technically a lever. Levers can also be a tool that pries something open or lifts objects by putting weight on one end. Finally, we have a pulley. In a pulley, a cord wraps around a wheel. As the wheel rotates, the cord moves in either direction. Pulleys are found on flagpoles to easily raise or lower the flag. You also may have seen them on TV shows or cartoons where a bucket is being lowered into a well using a pulley. To create a Rube Goldberg contraption at home, you are going to need to complete it in three steps. You're going to brainstorm your ideas, you're going to create a plan, and finally you get to build your machine. For brainstorming, talk your ideas out with your family. Include what objects you can find around your house to use that are readily available. For example, toilet paper tubes, dominoes, marbles, cardboard, toy cars, are all excellent items to use in your machine. Think of an ending goal. Rube Goldberg machines usually have a single end result like popping a balloon. Some invention goal ideas for the end of your machine, uh, besides popping a balloon, like I mentioned, could be crushing a can, closing a door, 
Um, pouring syrup on a pancake is always hilarious, just to name a few. For our machine at home, my daughter's thought of having a car crossing a finish line. The possibilities are endless. The conceptual drawing is basically your plan. Try to include a simple machine or two if you can. This is my daughter Zoe's drawing. She ran, made a ramp out of markers that were connected together and she used a toy car with a wheel and axle. Once you have your plan set, the fun part is to create your machine. It can be as small or as elaborate as you want it to be. So have a great time. Um, be creative. As a busy mom, sometimes you just want to sit and finish your cup of coffee. So, I came up with this. Make my life easier. You ready? Are you hungry? All right, dudes, I think we should get into the fundamentals that make our video really work. We've got six concepts here on the table. There's six things, just small variations on these, and you could make our whole video. Wow, they look so simple. Simple machine is the term that engineers and scientists give to these six objects. They're used to move things around or hold them in place. First, we have the inclined plane. An inclined plane is a sloped surface that makes it easier to move objects. This simple machine is called a wedge. A wedge is a V-shaped object for driving things apart or holding things in place. Here's a simple machine you already know, a screw. A screw is technically an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. A screw is generally used to lift materials or hold them together. This is called a lever. A lever is any rigid object or bar that rests on a fixed point called a fulcrum. Here's another one you all know. Most likely you even used it today. This is the wheel and axle, or basically a wheel that spins around a post. It's that same machine that we all use for our bikes and our cars, our skateboards and our scooters. Then this last one is called a pulley. A pulley is a rope that goes around a wheel and axle. This allows us to change the direction that the rope is pulling in. So when you analyze a chain reaction machine in our music video, or really any mechanical device, it turns out that it's always just these six simple machines, one after the next. Let's go back and watch the video and see if we can pick some of those out. Right at the beginning of the video, both the car and the pool ball are rolling down inclined planes. This golf club swinging is a lever. This can is hanging from a pulley. This candlestick is a screw. Here's a wheel and axle. Check out the green and white ball. It's held in place by a wedge. Now, we challenge you to go back, watch the whole video, and find as many simple machines as you can. They go by pretty quickly. Good luck. 